I know my chat have been waiting for this moment. We're going to go back to David Mensah because after we did his segment, because I was live at the time when this was posted and was going all over Twitter and going viral, he had a debate with Krishna Guru Murthy on Channel 4 about the strikes on the aid convoy. I've seen a couple of clips, but I've not seen all of it. But oh my God, it looks like it's going to be an absolute doozy because Krishna Guru Murthy has been absolutely watertight at holding Israeli spokespeople to account like Elon Levy. So I'm looking forward to watching him take down David Mensah, former director of Labour Friends of Israel and man who left the UK because he was scared of the jumbly crumbly concrete man. Rage Wojak personified himself, David Mensah, getting taken down by Krishna Guru Murthy. Let's watch. Well, the IDF didn't respond to our request for comment on those specific incidents, but joining me now from Tel Aviv is Israeli government spokesperson David Mensah. First of all, is the Israeli government apologising to the families of the aid workers killed, including the three families in Britain? Well, firstly, thank you, Krishnan, for uh, having me on. Uh, from the Prime Minister to the Defence Minister to the spokesman for the uh, Israel Defence Forces, all of us have expressed breast grief about this occurrence. Yes, but are you apologising? Uh, to be frank, to be frank, if you let me answer, Krishnan, there's no point attacking me already. I've just arrived, for heaven's sake. I'm not sake. attacking you. I'm just asking uh, you a simple question. I want no, an answer to it. No, you are. are you apologising? And allow oh, me to... Oh. Oh, it's Rage Wojak's at the ready, chat. Rage Wojak's at the ready. To answer, we have expressed grief about this operation, but we need to find out exactly what has happened. The Prime Minister, as he came out of hospital today, the Defence Minister and uh, Minister Gallant have all expressed grief. Indeed, there is a sense of grief of, yeah. across the whole country because WKD are one of the good guys. But you said this was in unintentional. This so this was a mistake, wasn't it? So you can apologise already. You don't need to know the, the precise details well, to issue an apology. Clearly, there are grieving families clearly tonight. Clearly, something... There are grieving families and we grieve with them because clearly something well, catastrophic uh, has happened. Clearly something catastrophic has happened. It's not something that we wanted and we're going to get to the bottom of this and find out exactly what happened because the, the role of bringing aid to innocent Gazans to all... The thing is they say, oh, we're going to investigate ourselves and then we're going to magically find out that actually we weren't at fault, just like they did with Shireen Abu Akhle. And I'm just like, well, no, you knew the exact coordinates of this particular aid convoy. You knew because they told you where they were. They were explicitly signed off, as you say, because they're one of the good guys and they got precision targeted. So either IDF soldiers are just completely off the leash, it was somebody not properly scrutinising the footage that they were given and the information that they were given, or it was a deliberate target. No prices for guessing what my summation of this one particularly is, given the amount of deliberate targeting of aid workers and of medical personnel that we have seen, not just across this war, but across basically all of the conflicts between Israel and Hamas at this point. Ordinary Gazans, not to Hamas, to the genocidal terror organisation Hamas, the, that role is sacrosanct to us. To us, We've got no beef aid as we possibly can. I mean, it's not, it's, that, it's not the, sacrosanct. The dilemma... Saying things like you're trying to get as much aid as possible is just not true because only a few days ago, the UN's highest court, the ICJ, ordered Israel to, without delay, facilitate humanitarian aid. And tonight, a ship laden with tonnes of aid is sailing away and humanitarian organisations are saying it is simply too dangerous for them to carry on supplying aid because you kill their aid workers. And they can't get aid in as well because they keep getting blocked. This is why Elon Levy was sacked, because he kept making claims about them not blocking aid that just weren't true. It is just not true to say it's sacrosanct. Uh, it absolutely is uh, sacrosanct because before this uh, uh, war, which we didn't want or didn't ask for, there were about 70 aid trucks of food alone, food alone uh, going into Gaza. Just today, there were 243 yeah, on an those average numbers of 100. Are no, they're not disputed. They're facts, uh, Christian. We, we can no, they're not, we can because the UN said things. that before the war, but there the were facts. 500 trucks going into Gaza and yeah. uh, around 150 so Christian, of I'm talking about food. food now. We're not, yes. sending in, we're not sending in cement anymore. Anyway, I don't we're want to argue about the numbers of anymore. trucks. I'm not because asking you about Concrete has been about used the fact. to build a terror network. Yeah. Uh, concrete has been used. <laughs> He's literally talking over Christian Guru Murthy like he was talking over James Schneider in that meme clip we watched before. I mean, literally, yeah, settler terrorists are there having a rave to stop aid trucks as well. Because the right wing of the Israeli population are just that normal. Incredibly normal. To build, uh, we're not uh, talking about that either right now. We're talking about no, because you you talked, Krishnan, about the aid trucks. We're saying that we're talking about food. There were seventy before yep. the war. Today there were two hundred. Well, again, I must say the, the seventy before the war food. is a disputed. Those number. are the facts, Krishnan. Well, it's not no, a fact. Not it's a disputed. It's a claim, and it's disputed. And well, there are Krishnan, contradictory. There are contradictory numbers. I say is disputed. Let, let's yeah, move but, on to the facts. We are a democratic country with a free press and.
You just banned Al Jazeera. You literally just banned Al Jazeera. If you're going to come here into my house talking about your free press and your democracy, despite the protests against your government trying to undermine democracy. And again, this is not just a representative for the state of Israel. David Mentor is a representative for the Israeli prime minister, the Israeli government, which is headed by Benjamin Netanyahu, the person who's being protested and the one who tried to undermine the judiciary in their democratic country. Very funny to me. With, with checks and balances. And, you know, at some point, you've got to uh, take our side over a genocidal uh, terrorist no, organization. No, we don't take anyone. No, 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 we don't have to take anybody's side, as Christian Grimothy says they rightly. And again, you keep saying, well, genocidal Hamas. I mean, you're the one on trial at the ICJ, but go figure. On Original sides where journalists are asking questions. Now, the next question about... the right thing to do, Christian. The, the, the next ahead. thing I wanted to ask you about is the 196 other aid workers who have been killed in Israeli strikes. Are you also going to investigate them in the same way? Look, every civilian death is a catastrophe, but the, you know, the point of this whole operation is to focus on Hamas and to get our hostages out. Any aid worker, genuine aid worker, of which WCK were, WCK are one of the good guys in this war because the dilemma that we face is that aid workers themselves yeah. well, what about actually Mesons participated. Do you accept they, that they are participated. aid workers? Aid workers themselves from uh, uh, from UNRWA, for exa example. No, no, we're not talking about UNRWA. I'm asking you about Medicine Sans and that's literally a, a, like a gigantic lie. They've produced zero evidence. Like we know full well they have produced no evidence whatsoever of this proposed UNRWA involvement in October the 7th. Literally zero, zero evidence has been presented for this. But they just want to undermine the aid workers who are helping Palestinians because they are happy to engineer a human catastrophe in Gaza because they want to colonize it. It's as simple as that. It's absolutely 100% as simple as that. On Frontier, are they okay. uh, recognized so I, aid I agency have... in your mind? I don't have any information on uh, MSF uh, to share with you, so I can't speak to that point. But I want to share with you the dilemma that we face here in Israel. No, We're no, no I to want to keep asking war. you about some of these cases, because also okay, sure, in January, ahead. there was the British charity Medical Aid for Palestinians that was hit. Is that being investigated? Again, I don't have any information on that uh, on that case. I, uh, from my memory banks, will tell you that Medical Aid for the Palestinians, I think, have been investigated by the Charity Commission in the UK itself self for the misuse of funds. So that's probably not the best example. But this expresses the dilemma which we're facing uh, here in Israel. We're trying to get aid using genuine partners, which we believe that WCK are a genuine partner, trying to uh, ensure that Hamas does not steal the aid, loot these trucks and get it to the people that need it. I mean, what happened last time people tried to get aid from the trucks? Can you remind me of what happened when people were trying to get flour from the aid trucks? in Gaza. Just remind me what happened then, David? Do you have any recollection of what the IDF did at that moment? Mm. You know, there's one thing you can be sure of that, unfortunately, is that there's no one hungry in Hamas. We're trying to get as much aid as we possibly can because we have no beef with ordinary Palestinians. We're trying to get to Hamas to finish off this war so that we can return to peace and most importantly, de-radicalize Gaza. Yeah, Gaza. I'm sure, right? I'm sure by deliberately destroying 60% of Gaza's civilian infrastructure, that's going to de-radicalize them. Like, if somebody said, we have to destroy Hamas so that we're going to blow up where you live, the first thing that I would end up doing would be forming Hamas too. Obviously in Minecraft, this is a joke. Please don't come after me, UK government. I am not supporting terrorism. This is a joke. The idea that you can bomb your way to de-radicalizing a population, this is the opposite of truth. You're creating an entirely fully radicalized people. Even in the West Bank, do you know how much Hamas's polling numbers have gone up in the West Bank alone? 30% since the start of the conflict. 30%. They are creating a new generation of radicalized Palestinians. They are doing the opposite of de-radicalizing. This is the most nonsense statement I've ever heard. Even from Elon Levy, we have no beef with ordinary Palestinians, apart from the fact that they're on the territory, that the party that you're here as a spokesperson for, the Kurd, explicitly says that they want to have ethnically cleansed because they believe in Israeli sovereignty, an ethnostate, no less, which won't contend with having there being a Jewish minority by absorbing the Palestinian population between the river and the sea, including the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. That's the explicit charter of the Kurd. Just before you go, can I ask you as a matter of fact, did Israel bomb the Iranian consulate in Syria? So I've got no comment on that. But what I can share okay, with fine. you is that uh, Daniel Hagari uh, said quite clearly that it wasn't a civilian embassy. It was um, a military. 
all civilian, all embassies are civilian embassies. It's a consular. It's protected under the Vene Vienna Conventions. We have a man here just trying to say it's fine that we bomb consulates because, again, they want to spark a, a broader Middle East conflict and try and drag Western powers and get involved with it. No, it was a military consular. Don't, don't you get it, guys? It was Hamas. Everything is Hamas. That's what it is. Base for Al Quds. So while I can't okay, confirm but you're not going or to deny admit it. Or, or, uh, uh, no, as I said, that was a military base for the Al Quds force. Iran, unfortunately, once again trying to destabilize this region, not for the good of the Palestinian people, not for the good of the the Arab world at yeah. large, but okay. just to destabilize this region. We're trying to go for peace. We're trying to J trying to go for peace by bombing the shit out of the ma vast majority of the entirety of the Gaza Strip whilst also attacking like Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon, whilst striking protected zones within Syria that belong to Iran to try and go for peace. This man is demented, is deranged, it's absolutely deranged to try and tell that they're going for peace, whilst handing out rifles to settlers in the West Bank, whilst they're deliberately trying to foment settler violence in the West Bank against Palestinians who they administer apartheid occupation against. Like, honestly, you literally, you, you cannot make this up. You can't make it up. To go for coexistence, but we need to I'm get sorry, rid David, of I'm sorry, David, I've got to cut, of, of cut you off there. Um, Cause I mean, sure. I'm, I'm trying, just trying to get answers to questions. And if you can't answer the question, Good then I can't be, allow yeah. you to do the propaganda bit afterwards. But David Mensa, thank you very much for being <laughs> You're for such a us. sweetheart. You're such uh, a sweetheart, Kira. Christian. <laughs> Oh my god, he's, he's so perfect. From the moment where he called Steve Baker a sea slur, I knew I loved Krishnan, but he's been so hot on calling out these Israeli propagandists for their absolute like chop logic nonsense. Because again, all he's doing there is trying to recite propaganda, won't answer the questions, just can constantly telling lies over and over and over again with no justification essentially to try and do what he said there he literally said at some point you have to take our side like this isn't football teams this is an international conflict we can't be taking sides with people we have to ensure that everybody to the best of their ability can conform to the laws of war to the geneva conventions that they sign up to of course israel doesn't sign up to the rome statues so we can't really hold them to that but we can of course use that as a yardstick to hold as to whether we send the weapons, whether America sends the weapons, whether or not that they get tried for genocide at the ICJ, which they should be absolutely tried for, and whilst then they will always take that, they will take whatever's used against them and then try and turn it around. They'll darvo and say, well, actually, we are being genocided by Hamas. Of course, I have no love for Hamas. I think they're terrible. And I think that everything that happened on October the 7th was a target of civilians is something that is completely and utterly indefensible and should be condemned at the highest opportunity. Like, I do indeed condemn Hamas. It's true. Shocking, I know. But like, for the same reasons that I condemn Hamas attacks on civilians, I also condemn Israeli attacks on civilians, as we've seen deliberately over the last 48 hours. They've done it multiple times, and it's obvious and they won't let them get away with it, but they think that it is good team versus bad team. Again, by continually talking about how, well, the West is aligned with us, we are the bulwark against the East, and you have to side with this for you know, geopolitical reasons rather than based upon the morality of the situation, and that is what I just can't countenance, and fair play for Christian to holding these people to account over and over again.